Hello and welcome to The Nest. My name is Cecilia Mweni. The Nest comes to you courtesy of CTN, where we create a world of decent conversations. Today on the show, we're going to talk about developing good sleep habits. I think one of the challenges that we have as parents is the issue of sleep. How do we get these babies to sleep at the time when they are meant to sleep? And how do we ensure that these babies are also safe when they're sleeping? Well, these and more questions will be answered on today's show as we join our guests, one who is a father and the other one a specialist, a child specialist, who will tell us more about developing these good sleep habits. Welcome back. Um, joining me on the show is a parent who will be telling us about his experience when it comes to sleeping. Um, I'll let him introduce himself. Yes, thank you so much. And uh, it's wonderful to be in the show. Uh, my name is uh, Geoffrey Otieno, a.k.a. Baba TJ. Yeah. And uh, I work as a, a media uh, editor and uh, online editor for uh, an organization. So I'm back end kind of a person. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, Baba TJ, yes. tell us about your experience with TJ when you came to sleep. Yeah, it's it's very it's a long story, but I'll let me just make it short. Yeah, I, uh, with babies uh, and uh, especially especially my son, uh, sleeping is, was a bit tricky at the first stages because he used to wake up in the middle of the night and he starts crying. And you're wondering what to do, or you're asking yourself, is he sick or? Is something wrong? So you, the mom has already started to panic. So you're wondering what to do. But again, now I will say uh, Google has come to the rescue. And also at the same time, we used to call. I used to call like my sister, my my aunts, those who have had babies before. I tell them what's happening. They as they tell me, it's okay. This is very normal. He'll get over it with time. But as a parent, you see, you have to get worried when you see your baby crying all the time, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so what was the experience? Would he uh, wake up in the middle of the night? When did he finally get to sleep by himself? Initially, uh, uh, when after after the hospital, when he came home, uh, it was very hard to get him to sleep because. Uh, he would sleep during the day, and then during the night. By the time you want to go to bed, he's still awake. Then when he, you go to sleep, when he sleeps like kidogo, then you you also want to go and sleep now. When you are the sleep, uh, the sleep comes, you hear he's already crying. So, and the mom was busy with him the whole day, and the mom also wants to sleep. So it 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 was really like a confusion. But I think something like about six months, six months later. He started. We started uh, monitoring how best to handle this, and we were advised of what to do. And what we usually did was to make sure he's very active uh, during the day and playful, playful. If the mom is playing with her, and when you are holding her, you don't want her to want him to sleep all the time because we realized if he sleeps a lot during the day, at night will be like in a wake. Yeah. yeah, so it's very, we ma made him active during the day. Then uh, at, uh, at night, before he sleeps, we make sure that he's well fed. So we realized when we did that, uh, he started having long, long hours of night sleep before he wakes up. So okay. he was waking up. With the time, he started waking up in the morning when we were also, also preparing to leave for, for work. Okay. Yeah. So, so let me take you back to the before six months. Yes. Um, when he'd cry, what would you do? Uh, uh, at first, we used to panic. Mm -hmm. I used to panic, the mom used to panic. So uh, we'll think that he's sick, then we'll, uh, the first thing we rush to is to check the body temperature, if he's hot, it's, it's, it's just okay. And sometimes maybe it's just the diaper that he has, uh, it needs changing, because that is what we realized we used to wake him up very often. So sometimes before it clicks on you that it's a diaper, you, you already click that this is sickness and you've already started. When you know once you panic, you don't think straight, you cannot think of such things. So uh, what we used to do, when he, he starts crying and then uh, I realized the mom was the one panicking mostly. So I used to, you know, as a man, you, when you show panic all the time, you also become a weakling, not in a bad way. 
but panic is there to be felt anyway. So uh, what I used to do, and uh, and this this thing that comes even before I explain that, there's this thing that comes when you have a baby. There's this you kind of sleep while you're awake, because any slight movement you're already up, your your eyes are already open, and yeah. I can relate that to when I was growing up, because I used to wonder why is it that when I'm sleeping and I want to go to go maybe to the washroom and then I call my mom or my dad's name. The, either one of them will respond fast or they'll respond in unison. So I used to wonder, how how do they sleep? Because any time you call them at night, they are they can respond. So, but I, I got the answer when we got our son. Because you sleep, but your eyes are awake. <laughs> so you so, basically uh, have an alarm. Yes. So you. any slight movement yeah. or any slight uh, cry, mm -hmm. or sometimes is even. Uh, the baby is just stretching, but you are already alert. What next? So we used to be alert like that. I think it is something that comes naturally. I okay. don't think you get training for that. <laughs> so it just comes. So you used to be much alert, but at the same time you are sleeping. Mm -hmm. So we used to be alert that uh, that much. And then uh, when the baby cries, uh, we check the diaper and. Uh, 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 we also realized that also another thing that was making him cry a lot was the stomach upset that comes with babies that uh, they I think they feel pain so mm -hmm. there's the this colic. Uh, yes colic yes okay. that's what, that okay. was the term I was looking for okay. um, so we this we talked to a pediatrician when we went to the clinics and we explained what was happening at that time then uh, he gave us the op options of what could be happening. Uh, you either check this, you check the diaper, you check if the, there's fever, and if there's no fever and the diaper is okay, and then you try and put him to sleep and he's not sleeping, then probably something maybe might be wrong. Or either you try to breastfeed him and he's not also uh, breastfeeding, and maybe you knew he breastfed well and again now he's crying. So when you check these options and everything seems to be okay from what you are checking, then probably maybe he could be he could be sick. So you have no option but just to to wait to try and make him go to sleep and as you wait for maybe towards the morning or you wait for longer hours with him awake or crying, then later on if the sleep comes, if he's okay. He'll be fine. He'll be fine and okay. he'll sleep. Okay. Uh, I'm just I'm just wondering about, <coughs> sorry, um, the methods that you'd use. You know, some people put music for the baby to sleep. Others they rock them. Yes, I I, I was almost forgetting that. Uh -huh. uh, he loved music. So, and there's a song that he loved by Nathaniel Bassi. Mm. So whenever we could put that song, because uh, it was my favorite song and I used to listen to it a lot of the time. So. We realized he also loved that song, so I had this uh, Bluetooth speaker that I could connect to my phone, and it plays. And when the, that, because it begins with long hours of long minutes of instrumentals, and then he could relax. That is if every other thing was not okay. okay. So he could relax. Then uh, you hear the sleep, uh, the, the 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 crying goes down, goes down. Then uh, gently just fall into sleep. But there's also something about babies. Uh, sometimes mm -hmm. they know he's being held, so he'll sleep. Okay. But immediately you place him on yeah. the on the bed, he's already awake even okay. before you, you remove your hands. So I don't know if their senses know the hands and the bed, the yeah. difference. Yeah. yeah, because sometimes you could uh, either me or the mom could hold him. Then as you you think that he's fast asleep. Mm. Then when you are going to place him on the bed, he's already awake. Awake again. And yeah. He's, Basically, you you, you, you you begin again from step from st Nathaniel step Bassi's one. Yeah, yes. The digital guy that you are. <laughs> yeah, okay. and sometimes the song is also a disturbance, but you don't know. Yeah, and he, true. He doesn't want to listen to it, and you don't know. So, okay. How um, old is TJ now? TJ now is a uh, few months to three years. Okay, and and does he go to bed by himself? Uh, like. Uh, uh, the good thing about having a baby and you watch him grow or you watch her grow is uh, when things, when as months uh, he, he continues to grow, you forget these things because like right now, he, he can speak, 
he can talk and he mm. can tell you I'm mm. hungry or I'm feeling pain here and uh, he says I want to go and sleep if he doesn't want he'll just say I'm not I don't want to sleep uh, I don't have sleep I'm not feeling like sleep, going to sleep right now but sometimes also you have to force him because unless you you end up because babies also have realized something with him he likes when as long as he's not seeing you going to bed he'll not go to bed okay there's no okay. way you'll tell him go to bed and you're still there mm -hmm. he'll want to be with you and when you force him he'll go to bed crying and when he cries he'll cry for long hours and again that could be something uh, to make you worry again when he starts yeah. crying and maybe he starts coughing yeah but mm -hmm. right now he he can he can go to sleep alone and uh, he can wake up and tell you he wants to do this he, he wants to to go and pee or sometimes he just pees in the uh, in the pampas in the diaper yeah so with age i think with with time as time goes by it, it is it, it's something that just works out uh, on itself okay so so you didn't get involved in sleep training in any way, no, no, no. We didn't get it wrong. I think that the, the tips that we are getting from friends, families, are the things that maybe helped us. And also, uh, being a person who, uh, my sister, my elder sister, uh, I saw, I saw her uh, the way she she was taking care of her babies, because uh, she had twins and it was really hectic. And she was also like uh, a first timer first time experience mm -hmm. and uh, she got a lot of tips and she's the she was like now my my advisor when things uh, are not looking right in regards to sleep i i just uh, ask her what do we do now and yeah she, she was advising yeah okay uh, there's a question i want to ask you but i think i'm going to let um our expert come in so that we can talk about it this is the issue concerning safety when it comes to sleeping stay tuned to the nest at some point when you remove them and then they're full then they won't want to come back so what you do is you separate feeds and sleeping Welcome back to the nest. Uh, we're joined by somebody who's not new to the show, but I'll let her introduce herself. Hi. Hi. My name is Esther Kimani. I am a doula, childbirth educator, lactation consultant, and a baby specialist. Yes. Okay. So I work with parents in their journey mm -hmm. of parenting. All right. Yes. So uh, we're saying something about that journey of parenting. One of the issues we struggle with is the issue of sleep. Yes. You know, how do we form good sleeping habits mm. when it comes to, um, you know, our children? Mm. And uh, just before the break, I was telling um, uh, Jeff that I needed to talk to him about, you know, um, how then also do we ensure that our babies sleep safely, mm. you know? Uh, uh, and maybe maybe the question I'd ask Jeff before we even come to you is, did you um, sleep with the child or did the child sleep separately after they were born? Uh, after... When we came from the hospital, mm -hmm. uh, we slept on the same bed because we everybody is wants to be close to the child. You don't want you to sleep or you put the cot and uh, crib next to to your bed, and you feel like you you are separating. So since we have a big bed, so we didn't find any problem sleeping with with him until maybe the first uh, when he got to the first. Uh, when we introduced the house help, because the first three months the mom was around, but when the house help came in, in picture, it is when now we, slowly by slowly, we started uh, making him to learn to sleep on a, a separate bed. But uh, fully sleeping on his bed was after his first year, when he celebrated his first birthday, that is when he got his okay. bed now to, to sleep. Okay, yeah. so Esther asking you that question on, on core sleeping. Some people mm. say it's um, an African not to co sleep, you know, mm -hmm. because that's how we were brought up. You know, we, our parents didn't have cots. Okay, well, 
yeah. maybe our parents' parents didn't have quads, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So so they used to cross sleep with us, and and there was an issue about the attachment and the detachment. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you could just like shed some light on that. Okay, so cross sleeping is yes, as you say, old as as life in itself. Mm -hmm. Mothers and and fathers have slept with their children for generations, but as th times changed and people got. Um, their own homes and their own rooms and whatever babies started being put separately. Um, so cost sleeping is all right, is okay, but um, w it depends on the two of you. Is it comfortable? Are you both comfortable with the baby sleeping in you, with you? Is it a safe environment? Because if we have one partner who maybe takes alcohol, then they can easily sleep on the baby. So it has to also meet the safety parameters so that somebody is not sleeping on the baby, maybe because they are alcohol or they, they have taken something that makes them not aware of their environment. Um, again, also the mattress that the baby sleeps in um, has to be quite firm. So you need, even in that big bed, the mattress needs to be quite nice and firm because babies have not yet learned how to breathe. So they need to be on a firm mattress. If they're in a soft mattress, it can interrupt how they breathe. So all those are safety parameters, but it is quite okay for you to sleep with your baby if you want to. Okay, yes. but how long should that go on for? Because I, I think some people look down on you and they're like, uh, how do you sleep with the baby? You know, mm -hmm. like, yeah, yeah. Um, ideally, what I usually recommend mm -hmm. is that you can do it in the, with the first maybe two, three, maybe two months. At that point, um, usually cause sleeping with your baby is very easy on the mother. If you've just had a delivery, you're healing, maybe you had a C-section, so getting out of bed every time to go and breastfeed the baby is very taxing on the body. So those first few weeks when you are recovering and you're with, 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 it's easier for your baby to be just like right next to you. And babies do sleep better when they're right next to their parents. So those, those months, those first two months, you can't go sleep. But then by the third month, um, let the baby maybe sleep next to you, you know, in a cot, maybe next to you. Because what it does, it, 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 um, we are talking about sleep and learning, your baby learning good sleep habits in early life. So a good sleep habit means that the baby needs to self-soothe themselves, to learn how to self-soothe and not to become dependent on either okay. of you yeah. on sleeping. So that helps that transition. Okay. So around two months then, yeah. Two to three months. But, yes. but um, I, I think... I still do recommend that the baby sleeps in the same room with the parents until at least the first year, the first birthday. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay, well, at least then you don't have yeah. like, to throw them away. Yeah. For, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, for, um, sorry for using yeah. those words, I can't throw a baby away. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm just wondering, um, especially for the CS moms, as mm -hmm. you said, you know, mm -hmm. um, it's easier on them. Mm -hmm. But then what you realize is that the baby sort of like depend, uh, forms a dependency mm -hmm. thing, you know, mm -hmm. like, like um, when they're in hospital, they've been told how to breastfeed. As they're laying down, mm. so this baby has learned how to breastfeed. Mm. As in, for them to sleep, they have to. The, mommy has got to breastfeeding me for me to sleep. Mm -hmm. You know, mm. how do we then make sure that it doesn't become, you know, it doesn't yield to those bad habits of, you know, I need to be breastfed for me to sleep. Okay, so babies follow a very distinct pattern when they are breastfeeding. Um, they will feed. Um, they will start off with a a nice um, a motion, and mm -hmm. they will actually do. Active suckling, active suckling, suckle, suckle, swallow, 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 mm -hmm. and they feed very well for a distinct time, depending on the baby, it's on demand. Then at some point, they actually stop. And then they're on their breast still, so they're staying for long periods, then they, mm -hmm. when you try and remove them, they, they're like, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. So when they start doing that, that means they're using you as a soother, they're using oh. you as a soothing technique. Uh -huh. So let your baby feed, once they're actively, they've, you can see that they've, They've, um, they've stopped actively feeding, what you do is remove them from the breast. If they were not full, they will wake up now and you will see they actually need to continue feeding. Mm -hmm. So you bath them and put them back. At some point when you remove them and they're they are full, then they won't want to come back. So what you do is you separate feeds and sleeping. Mm -hmm. So at that point, you're like, okay, you're full, you don't want to feed anymore, you can wrap them if you want to wrap them and actually put them you can put them next to you even, um, right next to you. And then instead of holding them and, you know, the usual rock, the rocking, yes. you just touch them and just let them. And most newborns actually figure that that's the way they sleep. So you separate feeding and, and, and the whole sleeping. 
Okay. So that's the thing. Most of us allow the babies to learn early to sleep with the breast. Yeah. So you separate them and then you won't have that problem. Okay. Yes. Just, just to bring you back to the conversation, did you have any bad habit that you yeah. trained your child into? Now, now that she's sleeping? talking about them, I can relate to some of them. Because uh, I remember one of the reasons why we were trying to, at three months, we were trying to, to make him sleep on his own was because during the months before, he will, I think he will sleep while breastfeeding, all, all through. Mm -hmm. You remove the breast, uh, you remove him from the breast and he starts to cry and yeah. it could go on and on. And even if you try to and ignore, you'll increase the, mm -hmm. the, the pace of, or the sound of, or continue to cry more and more. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, from what she, she has shared, we, I can relate to, to it and when uh, now he was off from breastfeeding completely, it is when I think uh, some of these things uh, began to, we began to forget about them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but breastfeeding, I think he was more of kind of breastfeeding all through the night. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I've heard of people who say they leave their lights on. Mm -hmm. Mm. You know, <laughs> would you advise on that? Um, as much as possible, mm -hmm. you should teach your baby to do things the way things are done. Yes. So meaning that you need to sleep. Now darkness, the way our brains work, is darkness st stimula um, stimulates the brain to provide the hormones that help with sleep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you don't have darkness, then the sleep hormone is actually not uh, not provided properly and then what happens you will actually suffer from sleep so sleeping with the light on not only interferes with your baby learning how to sleep but it also interferes with your sleep so we have very tired parents who just the same way if you were sleeping and i switched on the light you will just wake up yeah. even if you are deep asleep so what happens you as the parents end up sleeping very not sleeping well because the hormones for sleep are not being released so darkness is important so right from the beginning, teach your baby to, to sleep in the dark. So what you do is have a dim light. I, I remember when my babies were small, I'd have a torch, eh? a very almost torch. So mm -hmm. I'm changing the diaper with a torch and it's not on the baby's face. It's, um, you know, I'm using, it's right. on my mouth and I'm changing the diaper. And once you're off, it's off. I don't need, to, you don't need to see anything when I'm feeding. Mm -hmm. So that's a little trick to do. Because what happens when you do that at night, have darkness, and then breastfeed the baby. At night, you don't have conversations. You don't have... Music. Yeah, all those things, the way it's supposed to be. Okay. So what will happen is that this baby, but that's one, like if you start, especially for those ones who are pregnant and they're expecting their babies, if you start this from day one, you will actually come and testify to me that by six weeks, your baby is sleeping very well. Okay. It is normal for babies not to sleep at night. It is a God-given... Um, plan mm -hmm. yeah so what most people don't know is that the hormones that make breast milk there's a hormone called prolactin that makes breast milk is actually produced when you're supposed to be sleeping so you your 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 clock what you call your circadian rhythm the way you fall asleep and wake is at night is when your hormones are replaced yeah. so the hours that you're used to sleeping so this hormone for milk is actually produced at the hours where you usually sleep which is at night now, this hormone, this particular hormone, to be stimulated, the baby has to breastfeed. You get? Mm. So baby breastfeeds, and then the, the hormones raises up. So what God did, and that's the, the I think I also heard you saying, mm. the baby sleeps during the day, and at night, the baby yeah, is up. Yeah. So one of the things that I tell uh, new parents is that expect that this is actually normal, and it should happen. Because if a mom does not breastfeed at night, she will actually not get enough milk for her baby. She will not meet her baby's breast milk uh, demands. So what happens when the baby is sleeping during the day? That's why there's maternity leave. Mm -hmm. Mommy at least can also sleep. sleep. At the time. Mm -hmm. Then at night, be able to have enough energy. The reason why babies feel like they really disturb is because you didn't sleep during the day. And now at night, this baby is up. Yeah. So you're tired. So you find that you, you're very impatient with the baby, mm -hmm. but this is nature's way. And most babies change this clock at around six weeks, where now your milk supply is established 
and this baby can start um, sleeping. But for those times, what you do is, at night, when you still have to feed the baby, you feed the baby in the dark. Yeah. You know, just as long as the baby is, you can feel the breast, is, the baby is, is holding the breast properly, feed them. Then, as I said, no conversation, you're not singing. Because these babies, they form associations. They're like, what happened to the music and yeah. the light and the whatever? So you keep quiet, you feed them, you put them, as I said, if they fall asleep, remove them from the breast. Mm -hmm. Let them not associate breast with sleeping, let them down. So what will happen slowly, slowly, you'll find the baby just actually wakes up to feed. Okay. And they expect that at night we sleep. All right. Yes. Uh, okay. So what, what you've touched on basically is a bit of the sleep training that yes. you need to start from the from very beginning yes. so let's say uh these parents let's say for example they had the cs and they were not able to fully implement this so mm. they are struggling right now mm. with sleep training mm. i've heard of people letting their babies cry it out mm -hmm. you know i've heard of people rocking their babies to sleep mm -hmm. which method would you advocate for um so for a baby who is already older so they've already formed their sleep associations um let me explain it this way the way we sleep um, when we sleep, we have rhythms of sleep. We have what you call light sleep, the dream state, where you dream. Mm -hmm. Then you have deep sleep, where you can't even remember anything. You actually fall asleep deep, then you come back to light sleep. So that's how the cycle of sleep goes. So babies also have the same um, dream state and the same cycle. But babies tend to do more of dream state, which is the light sleep and they have shorter levels of, of deep sleep. So what happens, this baby forms association be, between going into bed and waking and going to deep sleep and coming back up. So this baby fell asleep with a breast in the mouth, like his son mm -hmm. was doing, and then he falls into dream state, then he falls deep asleep. When he comes back, light is like, what happened to the breast? Because mm -hmm. they have very short, they have only have 45 minutes of deep sleep. Yeah, and then they are back to light sleep. That's why most people say, my baby sleep for 45 minutes and gets up. So what the baby did is went into deep sleep. When they came back, they're like, what happened to the breast? Mm -hmm. So the first thing we say about sleep training is that you have to remove the sleep aids. So the sleep aids is the breast, it's the pacifier, the pacifier mm -hmm. it's the rocking, it's the music. music, it's whatever, all these things. So what happens, unfortunately, sleep habits that are formed in childhood actually follow you to the rest of your life. So we've got a generation right now. I, I think our parents were very, you know, your mom would put you there. She had mm -hmm. seven mm -hmm. children. Yeah. So there's no time to... To rock you. Yeah, mm -hmm. I remember my mother telling my brother, okay, good night, bye, and he's a baby. Mm -hmm. And he would cry a bit and then fall asleep because he figures... No one is coming. Yeah. So what happened? We actually learned how to soothe ourselves to sleep. Then we have this generation, and that's why we have a lot of mental issues. We have tired people with depression, because lack of sleep actually leads to a myriad of, of issues. Mm -hmm. And what happens, even as somebody grows, if they didn't get good sleep habits, they never learn to sleep through their life. So you find people having to take sleep, sleeping pills, people having to read a book, watch a movie, play a game before they can actually sleep. And when they do sleep, they wake up still feeling tired. Yeah. Those are habits that were started as a baby. So you have to teach your baby to sleep if you want them to have a healthy sleep life later. Mm -hmm. So what you do is you remove the sleep aids. So for me, what I usually recommend is a blend between the cry it out mm -hmm. and the learning, because this is an older baby. So mm -hmm. we're talking maybe around five months, yes, six months yes. baby. So what you can do is, first of all, establish a routine of how you do things. So decide, we want our baby to be sleeping at this time. This time. Mm -hmm. I recommend that it let it not be too early. Because if you say 7 o'clock, then your baby will learn how to sleep at 7 o'clock. And with Nairobi Jam, you get home at 7. So mm -hmm. it means that you will never spend time with your baby. So maybe say the baby will sleep at 8.30, for example. So you have to be strict on that. So at 8.30, 8 o'clock, start your winding down. Mm -hmm. Change. You have to do things, the same thing every day. So take the baby, change their, their clothes, you know, like into night clothes. Go to the room where it's darkened, it's, it's not a bright light. And then now that's when maybe you can have the music. You can say, baby, there's a song we sing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, I, there's a song we used to sing for my babies. When, and that would trigger just, they knew that it is time to sleep. 
it can be a prayer it can be the grace of our lord something that's rhythmic and that you will say every day and that everyone can do even the nanny because what happens if you teach at night the nanny can also teach them during nap time yeah. so if it's a prayer the nanny can say it and when they say it the baby just knows that it's time to sleep okay. so it's very easy for the whole household to 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 to, to, to become part of it okay. so say the prayer and then now you're sleep training this baby so you take the baby and then you kiss them and you tell them it's time to sleep yeah you can use those particular words mm-hmm. every day ama saya kulala lala baby lala things that you will say every day and then you put them in bed and then you switch on the light switch off the light and then you sit there okay so you don't walk out because when you switch off the light the baby will know you're here this this is an older baby so they can tell and they can hear you and babies have strong sense of smell so your baby of course will be like what Yeah. So as parents we are very afraid of tears. I don't know why. Yeah. And tears are children's way of getting their way and knowing that this is what I do. So don't be afraid of little tears. Okay. So as your baby will cry and scream every few minutes, you just stand and just like hold them and just, you know, tell them it's okay. Oh shh. And then you stop and you sit. So the baby will cry and most babies will cry for even half an hour or more. Then eventually they fall asleep most times when they fall asleep completely by themselves like like that yes they will sleep and they've cried but they'll sleep and then they 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 get up okay then the second day we do the same by the third day most babies will just sleep don't right. even cry okay i think so, uh, from what, about the lighting and ours i think we forced him to accept darkness because mm-hmm. A, we, we realized when we came from hospital he could not switch off the light mm. he could just cry and we for the first i think six months we mm. just slept with <coughs> with the lights on until now maybe one day i was talking to a colleague of mine and she told me you you sleep with the with the lights on you are training that baby to to get used to that you'll have trouble removing him from from that that uh, mentality of you have to sleep with the lights on so we just started by switching off total darkness and he okay. cried and we we'll just uh, try and hold him but without switching on the lights and with the time he got used to it and like nowadays before you switch off the light he cannot sleep so i think it is uh, it is something that to take note of because sometimes people might be afraid of the cries as you said and uh, they just uh, assume that it is it is normal and mm. they don't know from what she said they don't know that this will affect the future it, this is also affecting them uh, in terms of uh, their sleep uh, time it is being affected yeah wow okay that's quite insightful uh, and 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 the issue about crying and pull being afraid of tears don't blame us blame the society <laughs> you know even sit in yes. tattoos the baby cries oh breastfeed the yeah. baby you know yes. and all that yeah. so maybe just to wind up everything uh tell us the importance of naps yes during um, the day children as i said because they they they, they are growing mm. and the the body system only produces hormones when you're sleeping so it's important for babies to sleep and the amount of sleep ranges from when they are newborns they sleep for around 20 20 hours mm-hmm. and by the time they are around a year they they need around 14 hours which means that if they're doing 8 hours then they need the all 10 hours at night they need at least an hour and another hour of napping maybe in the morning and in the afternoon so it's important to incorporate naps into your baby's um uh, routine now the amazing thing about naps is the more a baby naps well the more they get better night sleep that's what people don't know so an overstimulated baby is a baby who does not sleep well so when they nap during the day then they will actually rest and it allows their brain to rest and they will have another nap and then by evening they are actually not too tired to sleep because they can be too tired to sleep so it's very very important to keep napping and most children up to around age 4 will actually still need at least one nap during the day. Okay? Yeah. yeah, so thank you so much for gracing us with your presence and of course for you know all our wisdom. I mean, we learned so much from you. Thank you. So thank you so much. Mm. Thank you Jeff for sharing your experience with us. Thank you. So we'll be right back uh, for the shop and swap segment.
Do you have anything, any baby stuff that you'd want to sell or swap? Please do send us the pictures on the number on your screen. Today on the next we're talking about developing good sleep habits. My take home is that we need to develop these good habits because bad sleep habits will affect our children later on in life. I would like to thank Eastland Hotel for hosting us and of course our cameraman and our producer for the good work they're doing behind the scenes. Remember, The Nest comes to you courtesy of CTN where we create a world of decent conversations.